Hello guys, welcome back to Geology Concepts. Now this is the next video in the sedimentology series. And in this video we'll look into stable isotope geochemistry, which is the let's say a mathematical part of uh, sedimentology. Numerical comes from these questions and which are quite frequent. So let's get into it. This series will be in two parts. In this first part, I'll discuss main concepts and formulas. And in second part, we'll discuss numericals, how to solve them. Okay. So if you see a stable isotope geochemistry, so mostly we understand geochemistry or uh, uh, variation in the isotopic concentration or composition because of some nuclear activity. But that is in the case of unstable unstable uh, nucleus like of uranium and uh, uh, let's say strontium and others but uh, in case of a stable isotope like of oxygen and carbon the com variations come occurs because of the changes through physiochemical processes okay these physical physicochemical or physiochemical process can be evaporation it can be condensation and then plants intake from soil now this will cause variation because plants will take uh, take the uh, components in a, in a certain proportion uh, then so this will cause variation in the concentration of soil and the what plant is taking from the soil and also in the photosynthesis process then these are and there are many other examples all physical physical chemical process rather than the nuclear processes so variation arising from those in the isotopic concentration is called stable isotope geochemistry so stable isotope geochemistry deals with those kinds of variations okay so moving on there are stable isotopes like hydrogen we have delta d for lithium we have delta 7 so normally it is lithium is Atomic, number, atomic mass is 6 but lithium 7 is the isotope so ratio will be lithium 7 is to lithium 6 and will be denoted by this sign delta this delta 7 lithium similarly for boron then for carbon carbon 13 is there for nitrogen there is nitrogen 15 okay and the ratio will be this so and for oxygen there is 2 oxygen 18 and oxygen 17 Okay, oxygen 16 is the is the most stable, or let's say the predominant form. The isotope form is oxygen 18 and 17, and uh, for sulfur it is 34. Delta 34 is so we write it as delta 13 C, not delta C 13. Okay, remember this. This is a universal notation which is being used. Now, how do we calculate the variation? I mean, there must be some standard from where we'll compare it. So these are the standards that have been developed by the geochemists or scientists. A small standard is for hydrogen, oxygen, PDP is for carbon. Now I'll get I'll tell you you might be hearing it for the first time or you may know it, but I'll explain what is a small and what is PDP and all. Okay, but just for time being assume that these are some standard value against which you will compare the variation of these ratios okay how far these are they are they are from these standard values okay okay so mainly these are the elements on which we'll see the isotopic variations okay now moving on let's understand what is this delta this delta notation okay now delta is is just a value which which tells us how much different how much is the variation from a certain standard value it is similar to how we calculate percentages but percentage deals with the per cent per thousand but uh, typically the variation here is in parts per thousand so we report it as per mil per mil is denoted by this which means per thousand okay if you see it for the example of oxygen here per mil deviation from a small so we read that for oxygen the standard is small now small is a standard mean ocean water 
so the ratio of o18 to o16 in in, uh, in the standard mean ocean water is taken as a reference now this value is calculated and this is this is there this is given to you now you have to calculate with respect to this how much is your sample deviating okay so and you calculate it with 10 to the power 3 which is parts per thousand so this formula you have to remember okay this is the main formula for calculating delta 18 or, or delta of any compound this is for oxygen okay next moving on we have PDP as I have said before PDP what is PDP PDP is actually used as a carbon standard PDP is defined as PD belmite standard this is some place okay so just don't have to go deep into that just understand that PDP standard is the standard value okay now this is for carbon and oxygen both now unfortunately oxygen has two now one is SMO and one is PDP so they must be related to each other so that you can compare so oxy delta 18 O at PDP is related to delta 18 of SMO with this formula okay so if you have given SMO you can calculate PDP if you are given PDP so vice versa you can calculate the values okay so we have to remember this only most of the time it is given but it's good if you remember it this this value 1.03086 and 30.86 so if you more the more only vehicles you will solve the more easier easily you will remember it okay. then similarly for delta d for hydrogen it is more as you have seen for c is pdp for nitrogen we just take the atmospheric uh, ratio of n15 is to n14 so this is for the delta now we have to understand the term called fractionation factor now fractionation factor from the name is suggest that how much fraction of certain certain ratio or certain isotope is being transferred to another phase like here two phase a and b in case of uh, water this phase can be liquid and uh, vapor or ice and liquid so for water it, so these are different phases of the same compound let's say in this case uh, uh, water okay now for oxygen if you are doing ra and rb are just the sample ratios ratio of your samples okay as you have seen in the earlier formula for delta okay so fractionation factor is defined as if you are going from a to b fractionation is from a to b then it is defined as ra upon rb so del now from the formula from the earlier formula of delta we can understand that delta 18 oa is equal to ra which is sample minus the standard which is small into 10 to power 3 now if we rearrange this equation we will get something like this delta 18 o plus 1 is equal to ra upon standard okay finally you will get this R is equal to delta 18 O eight plus 10 to power 3 into R standard upon 10 to power 3. Now putting this back into the alpha formula of R A upon R B, we'll get like something like this. Okay, so this will get cancelled. What you will left, we will be left with alpha A to B is equal to del A upon 10 to power 3 into del B upon 10 to power 3. Now you have to remember this formula. This is a very handy formula. I'll mark it as double star here for you because you will you have to use it more often. Alright. So this is you have to remember delta A to B to B. Okay. A going to B. Then fractionation factor will be delta A upon 10 to power 3 upon delta B into 10 to power 3 plus 10 to power 3. Sorry. So and delta can be for any compound, oxygen, carbon, anything. Okay, fractionation of can be of anything. This example I have taken is of oxygen, so I have written delta 18 OA. But if you write delta A, this can be for any compound, any any stable isotope. All right. Then also, if you want to further, you know, reduce it to some simpler equation, del. If you solve the last equation or rearrange the last equation, you subtract one from 
each side delta a v minus 1 will become delta a minus v upon delta v plus 3 now since delta b is very small delta b plus 10 to the power 3 can be replaced by 10 to the power 3 now delta a minus delta b is denoted by delta a to b so this is the equation we are left with here so delta a to b is equal to alpha a to b minus 1 10 to the power 3 now alpha for x which is very close to 1 x minus 1 can be written as ln x so this is a standard you know approximation you can make so delta can be written as 10 to power 3 ln a ln alpha a to b so just alpha minus 1 is just written as ln alpha here okay and 10 to power 3 is already there so this is the formula you have to remember okay so there are three four formulas in this video that you have to remember so in the next video we will go into understanding and solving numerical okay there are some fine nitty gritties in solving you have to understand the question first because see all this is very arithmetic and linear equations you you can solve it very easily there is no problem with that but you have to understand the question understand the notation what is being asked and what you are calculating okay this sometimes can cause a confusion and you will end up with the wrong answer so in the next video we will understand how to solve numericals okay so for time being this is for this video and uh, keep revising bye for now and then please please subscribe to my channel and spread the word i am getting a good response i want to keep it that way okay thank you so much subscribe to know your planet better